So welcome back or welcome to End User Tools presents Spotted Lanternfly Property Assessment Data Collection using the ArcGIS field maps. So we'll be talking about the much anticipated property assessment map using that ArcGIS field maps mobile application. So welcome, welcome. My name is Jenny Sauer. I'm a member of the End User Tools team. And for those of you who have just completed the trapping and visual training in the previous hour. Some of this is going to be a repeat to you. I just beg you to humor me because it is important to hear even if you're hearing it again. Please just stay with, bear with me, uh, listen even if you've heard it already. I'll try to make it a little bit more interesting. I'm going to do my best. The property assessment map is a map that is going to give you a couple of layers to collect data on and make changes on. And these are designated for your state's view. So you'll be able to record or view data according to your state and, um, and add data there. So there's a couple of things that you probably would need to have as reference. I'm going to put two little links in the chat for you. And I'm going to show you what those are quickly. Firstly, this mobile data collection tools web page is a great resource for you. This is being recorded and this training will show up on the bottom half of this main page under the video gallery. It's uh, categorized under pest program, which helps sort those videos down there. Or you can search by keyword or title here, just SLF or property assessment will probably get you there. Just give me about a, a week to get that there. I'll work as fast as I can, but sometimes putting tickets in and getting those resources in place takes a few days here and there. Um, but that's where you can see this training. So if you want to use it as reference, or if someone has had to miss training, that's where they can find this. There is also a just a wealth of resources here. You can see there's explainer videos that tell you how to use various things. There's a foundations video series where you can find 10 videos on how to use the ArcGIS field maps application according to PPQ needs and uses. So there's a, there's a lot here for you to explore. The PEST program specific training documents also has all of our programs listed. There's spotted lanternfly for you. And scrolling down a little bit, you'll see the property assessment surveys have documents to support things. I would recommend if you, even today, as we talk this through, open up that user manual. It's going to show you the purpose behind each layer in, in terms of data collection. And there's also a quick reference guide there for you if you just need like a little cheat sheet on how to get started. I want to show you page three of this user manual or this usual user guide um, here outlines these three layers. There's treatment points, treatment areas, and site plans layers. And treatment areas and site plans also both have related tables for recording repeat activities on the same location. So this might be something you want to keep open as we walk our way through these layers today um, and I will try to point you back to where you can find this information as we talk about it. The second link is different from our previous link for a quiz and you can see that here in the title training quiz SLF property assessment. So this is a quiz on the training we're performing now and um, it'd be great if you took this quiz for your own sake. One, one field to pay attention to is this third question on the email address. You'll have to manually type in your email address here. This is our way of including state cooperators, internal and external users. So if you input your email address here with care, there's an automation set so that when you complete this quiz, you will get an email stating that you've completed this training. The quiz is what indicates you completed the training. So it benefits you a little bit. You get that little email that just gives you that qualifier that you completed this training, but also helps me out because it helps me see where questions were answered correctly or maybe some had trouble with based on probably me. <laughs> I'm the one telling you this information. So I want to make sure that I'm able to get across the things that I really want you to take away. So it gives me that little um, heads up as well. All right. 
so the first thing I want to show you is I've got a little visual. The last training on uh, trapping and visuals, I had a little girl with a pile of books. So this is a little different, but the same kind of idea. We're kind of stair stepping through data here. We're, we're trying to gain experience through some learning and um, you know where to find documents. Maybe that's this first step. Where do I find some information? Um, you, you start learning how to assess training protocol, how, to, how um, or sorry, survey protocol. How does SLF work as a program? What kind of data is important and why? You might be on this third step and start thinking about what device you're going to use and whether you feel comfortable using it. It could be an iPad. If you're with PPQ, that's pretty typical. Many users also use an iPhone, which is totally fine. So you're being you're making yourself comfortable with all of the steps along the way. That mobile app might be a big one for some of us. Um, as I said, there's a 10 video series on how to use that ArcGIS Field Maps application. It's new this year, so everyone's having to learn how to use it and, and feel comfortable. But some of you may have used it a little. So you're, you're kind of stepping up these steps, right? And the very top step might be this graduation cap. And maybe I'm so small that I'm just under that cap. But today, what we're going to talk about is that the, the really last steps, like the quick last step to help you understand how the application was configured, how it was designed to collect the data, which you already know needs to be collected all the way back at I guess I said it was step two, huh? So while your SLF multi-state coordinator, Matthew Travis, is responsible for communicating all those survey protocol requirements, this training here now is just going to be your quick last stop, just the top of that stepping books, book steps to, to really knowing how to collect this data. Another resource you have is Erica Wiley. She's taken a lot of time to document how to use these apps, what the fields what data should be input into each field, et cetera. She's got all of those details in place and is a willing and happy participant if you have questions. So those two would be where you'd go to that. So let's talk about what we'll talk about. As I said, we're gonna talk about a little bit this field app, field maps application, how to sign into it. Uh, we've talked about this a little if you already attended the meeting, but let's, the previous training, uh, let's do it again. We'll talk about how important it is to be in the correct URL, whether it's official or training. We're going to overview the disconnected workflow. We'll overview the layers, but we'll go into detail when we look at the data forms and talk about how to input data there. And hopefully by the time we get down to caution areas, this will be sort of a review for you all, the things to pay special attention to. So the field maps application. This is a new application this year. And as I said, there is a user guide, a written user guide that you can reference and a self-paced video series that I highly recommend completing, even if you've used field maps a little bit, and even if you think you kind of got the gist. It just doesn't hurt you to make sure that you feel just super comfortable and confident moving forward. And that video series takes about an hour. So for an hour's worth of your time, you can really kind of build that confidence level. Remember, those are all found on the mobile data collection tools website. So when you click on that field maps or tap on that field maps application from your mobile device, you'll get a screen that looks like this. You have the option to sign in with ArcGIS Online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. And here at PPQ, all of our maps are hosted for mobile data collection under this Enterprise portal. So we're going to always tap sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise. That's what we'll choose um, here with PPQ. And then when you tap that option, your first time through, you'll get these bottom two options specify a new URL or scan code and specify a new URL is what we'll choose. We'll tap that, which will open a little box and your keyboard. And the first time doing this, you will have to manually and very carefully type in the URL that is located in your user guide and is also here above. We're going to type in the full thing with HTTPS, colon forward slash forward slash and then it holds on to it so this is my view now after i have signed in previously you can see the field maps application holds on to that url so then the second time through all i will do is tap on that url to sign in and then it's going to take you through your eauth um, 
application or now we're being asked to use mobile link to sign in so this is what you want to put in this url is the important part but remember we talked about already that there are two urls and the way this works is the official url which you just saw previously i'll give you a couple boxes here to help you see the differences this maps.mrp.usda this is where the official map is held for data collection. And so if you're out in the field and you're ready to go and you are collecting data, you'll want to be sure you sign in using this URL at the top here. But my team makes for everyone's uh, use a version of that official map to be used for training, for practice, for demonstrations, for exercises, just for playing around and feeling comfortable. And that's meant to make sure that you have an opportunity to enter data in a map that is not official and doesn't get confused for official data. And so that's the real thing here that you want to keep between these two URL or these two login URLs is you want to make sure, and this is a quiz question too, you want to make sure that if you are signed into this official MRP portal, that you are only entering official data. And the, the flip of that, if you are signed into this maps-stg or staging portal, that you are only entering pretend, play, training, demonstration, all of those things, not official data in this, in this stage portal. And my rule of thumb is when in doubt, sign out. If you don't know which portal you've signed into, sign out and sign into the correct one. And all of that said, you'll see um, when I demonstrate a little bit, the training maps are pretty clearly marked as training. They're titled with training in all caps in the title of the map. The thumbnail says training. And even the base map, the, the, um, the base layer showing the Earth's surface and the features on it is pretty bland. It's just a little uh, light gray canvas, not much imagery, nothing really pretty. So there are signs there that will tell you even when you're in the map, whether you are in an official data collection map or a training map. So keep those clear. And like I said, when in doubt, sign out. The disconnected workflow. Um, this is one that sometimes users using iPhones will overlook because the iPhone has a cellular data plan. And typically our, at least for PPQ, our iPads do not come with a cellular data plan because we 100% use the disconnected workflow whenever we possibly can. And the ArcGIS field maps application is specifically designed to operate in disconnected mode, meaning not connected to Wi-Fi. So the way that that's done does require a little bit of preparation. While connected to Wi-Fi, you would download a map area or an area of interest where you need to collect data downloaded to your device. And then once that's confirmed and in place, you can go ahead and disconnect from Wi-Fi, go on out into the field and collect data into your device. And then by the end of the day, return to that reliable Wi-Fi connection and synchronize that data from your device back up to that hosted map service. This synchronization is also a two-way synchronization. So we recommend doing that in the morning before leaving and in the evening. And what it does is it pulls data into your downloaded map area that may have been added by other users from that hosted map service. So it pulls data into your map and also pushes data that you've collected into your downloaded map area up into that hosted service. So that allows for pretty quick, nearly, nearly live, according to your sync, probably daily synchronized ability to monitor and make decisions on that data from that hosted map service. So we recommend that morning and night, that synchronization. But please do keep in mind this disconnected mode as, as an option, even if you have a good Wi-Fi connection or a cellular plan, for instance, using an iPhone, because there's also, when you are using a map live or in connected mode, there's kind of a constant communication between your device in field maps, that map, and the hosted map service. So what it's doing is constantly pinging that portal server to update that map that you're using in use. And if there's a problem with the portal, or if it's overloaded with a lot of users, it might be a little extra slow, or anything happens at all, you could find yourself delayed in work. So 
working while disconnected really protects you from network issues, both Wi-Fi connection issues and that portal connection, network connection issue. So it can really help save some, some problems down the road. So we recommend it. All right, let's dive into the first layer. Remember, we have treatment points, treatment areas, and site plans as three layers. And the treatment points layer, I'll point you back to that user guide, remember, and page three as an overview of all of the layers, if you recall. And the treatment points layer is used to record the location and eventual treatment of a single tree. If a treatment is performed on a treatment point, then all the treatment related fields should be completed. So there's fields within that form, but they are not required when the point is first assessed. <clears throat> assessed, sorry. Assessment happens year round while most treatments occur between April and October. So you could be assessing and creating that first, um, that first bit of information year round, but then the treatments uh, section, those related fields are optional then later when the treatment occurs. And egg mass treatments occur during the winter and are recorded in a separate map. So let's have a look at what that looks like. I'm gonna share my iPad view, and this is a PPQ iPad, which has gone to sleep, so I gotta unlock it. I, again, I don't have a OtterBox case on this. It makes it hard to see on the camera. It gives it a glare, but please be sure you have a case. This is a naked iPad here, and that's not typical. But we can see here that my iPad has been loaded with all of the possible survey apps that we use in PPQ. And I'm gonna go ahead and tap to open field maps. And field maps is gonna go all the way into the last map I was using. So I'm gonna back out of this. I have to hit this back button twice to get to the main maps menu. And let's say, I, I actually know that I'm in the stage portal, so I know I'm in the right one to use a training map, but let's say I'm not sure. I'll go to this profile menu, scroll on up, hit sign out. Remember, when in doubt, sign out. But I'm going to show you why I know that I am. For one, I, I just did this today, and I know I'm signed in. But I can see a plethora of maps here, and all their titles begin with training in all caps. It's still kind of loading some images, but there we go. They just popped in. All the thumbnails also say training on them. And this little group down here under the group section only exists in the stage portal, this PPQ EUT or NU user tools training group holds all of the training maps in it and is only present in this stage portal. So I'm already pretty sure by several reasons that I'm in the right spot. Now I downloaded an offline map as I suggested to you for this property assessment map. And so I can see under the on device list, here it is, training PPQ SLF property assessment 2022 field map, and I have an offline area. I'm going to tap that map card to see my offline area. And I made sure, even though I'm in Colorado, I downloaded an area in Winchester, Pennsylvania. And that's because that's what layer the site plans layer is visible in. So I just wanted to be able to show you all the layers. So I'm not in Pennsylvania, but I do have a downloaded map area in Pennsylvania, and I'm going to open that. Now, all the way along until this point, I was able to see the map title. When I go back right here, I can see training as the map title. So I'm checking all along to be sure I am in a training map, and I recommend that to you all too. So now I feel good about this uh, map. I am not in an official layer. I can enter data freely and I can play around with you all and demonstrate things. Let's have a look at some of these icons along the top right. So remember, this is a downloaded map area. And so I have this icon for synchronizing my data. I have an arrow in and an arrow out, and it looks to be all in sync at this point. Then I have this layers menu, which I'll open. And I can see that I have all three layers are visible. For now, what I'm gonna do is turn off the site plans layer, just to reduce things a little bit visually. And we can see I've got points and areas for treatment that are visible. I'll close that. In the three dot or overflow menu here, I have a useful legend 
and I'll tap legend. And the legend now is going to show me the layers that I have made visible. And remember, that was just two. And so here they are, the treatment points and the treatment areas. And so if there was data recorded in this area, these symbols would be on this map, and I can now view what they mean. So that's a kind of handy little tool. Also in this overflow menu is a new feature called the markup layer. And the markup layer really is just that. It's a layer for marking things up. It's like your little notes layer on the map. And it's a new feature. I'm really interested to see how folks might start using it. I can certainly think of ideas, but just want to give you um, the option and show you where it is and give you two rules of thumb for the markup layer. The first rule is that it is not official. And anything you put in the markup layer is not official data, so be careful adding comments or notes here that should maybe appear in the main data form. And the second rule is it really lives on your device unless you share it. So be sure that you understand that this is really just private notes for yourself. That can be certainly very useful, but if it's something that needs to be shared, it shouldn't go on the markup layer um, unless you want to share the markup layer. So those two things. All right, so the treatment points layer is to record the location and eventual treatment of a single tree. So in order to add data, we tap this add button on the lower right. And now I have the option of everything, all the layers that have been may enabled to be visible. And remember again, that's two layers. We did not make visible the site plans layer right now. So we're seeing the treatment points and the treatment areas. And our first question is, we want to enter data in the treatment points layer, right? So this is our first question. What kind of treatment is expected here? And I'm just, um, I'm going to choose herbicide here. And again, I'm not in, I'm in Colorado, and so the GPS is not giving me a blue dot showing my location in this map because I'm not in Pennsylvania, and it's not giving me a blue circle around this little crosshairs, and that is correct because I'm not in Pennsylvania, but it means that I have to add the point. So I'm going to actually locate this point, uh, I'm just going to kind of place it there, and then I have to add the point. But for you operating in the location where you're actually present, you'll see a little blue GPS dot and it will place that symbol for you already, unless you need to move it. So I've just placed that symbol and I'll move the crosshairs away so you can see it. You can see it pulled in the treatment plan for us that we picked. We have a data form here with some fields have asterisks after them, which means they're required and some don't. I'm gonna just fill out a few things assessment by and assessment completion date opens up a calendar view which allows me to pick the date i'm really bad at fat fingering these calendars so i tend to do that and then like scroll and end up with the wrong date but you can jump right back to today's date by tapping this blue today see it did that for me and then you can close the field by tapping that field again and I that's a, a game changer for me that saves me from having the wrong date pop in I'm going to just give some numbers here and leave some of this open you can see treatment details is a there's customer information there's treatment details for when a treatment is performed on this one single tree. There's chemical details here to fill out as options and supplemental details. And then I've got treatment comments. And in this one, I'm going to put test for now because I want to be really clear that what I'm entering is not real data, even though I know I'm in a training map. And then I would just kind of give a scroll through that I fill this out correctly and go ahead and hit submit. And that's really all there is to treatment points. If I want to edit it, I have a pencil option here when that symbol is selected, or I can go ahead and scroll up. It's a pretty long data form and then hit edit here. And that opens me up to enable me to play, make that edit. If I tap edit, it's just going to open the same form, but enabled for editing instead of just view only. So let's say I got that number wrong. If I make a change in an edit, then I have to go ahead and submit that edit as well. So I've made an edit uh, to a previous form. I'm going to hit submit. And there we go. All right, so that's treatment points. Let's 
talk about treatment areas. It's that next layer down. And again, that layer information in brief is found in that user manual, page three in that overview section. And it really describes the treatment areas as being used to record the location of an area. So not a single tree, now an area, as you might expect with the word area, an area planned for treatment. And then there is a treatment areas activity related table, which is used to record all the treatments performed on that same area. A treatment area activity must be recorded when a treatment is performed. This is a new feature for this year, 2022, so that users can utilize the treatment area activities to record multiple treatments without redrawing the area. So maybe those words didn't make as much sense as it might to have a look at this. Let's see what that looks like in practice. I'm going to go ahead and close that. What you would want to do firstly is make sure that layer is enabled. So we know that we did, but I'm going to open that layers menu. And you can see I do have treatment areas visual or enabled. And I know that because that little toggle button is blue. So we want to make sure that the, the layer we're collecting on is actually enabled for use. And that's where you want to do that. And again, we want to add a layer. So we're going to hit this. Sorry, we want to air, add an area. So we're going to hit this add button. And we've got a crosshairs here, which again isn't showing our first point because I'm not <laughs> I'm not here. Um, but it does the same thing. It's showing us the options. It shows us what we chose recently. And then it shows us the options for the two layers we have enabled. Now we know we want to add a treatment area. So it's going to be one of these guys. We're, we placed an herbicide uh, point earlier. Let's try, uh, let's do insecticide for this area. And I highly recommend that you begin this by drawing the area. And if you are in the location where GPS is working for you, it's going to start the first point exactly at your GPS location. But because I am not anywhere near here, it's asking me to draw fresh. So I'm going to have to place the first point. If you need to, this is the tricky part. So that's why I would do it first. So in order to add the point, let's say I'm going to add a little area here. Uh, that's where I want my first point. There we go. We're going to draw the perimeter of the area. So I'm going to tap and drag and see we get a little dotted line there. And you might do several points so you get a better shape. I'm just going to do a rough shape here. That's where I want my second point. So I'll hit add point. And there we got a line. I'm going to pull away from that. Add point. And let's do to there, add point. And do you see that little green flash? It means that field maps recognized you've probably closed off an area, even before we did the final point. But I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Back to the same point, add point, and there we go. So now I've drawn the shape. And now I can go ahead and give some attention to this data form. I'm going to fill out, just for the sake of the demo, what we have to. I'm going to give it a calendar date. I'm going to write my name in. And I'm going to leave blank everything else for now. And I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. And there we go. As you can see, it's given it that little lined uh, pattern, which is a symbol for insecticide that we saw from the legend. So that's correct. And let's say I'm going to exit out of that. Let's say that we're coming back the next day or maybe even this was done early in the year and now we're going to come back and and do a treatment later. So in order to record that treatment activity, now we don't need to draw a new area. We have the area drawn and so we can just go to that on the map, select that area by tapping it. We can tell it's selected because as you can see you get a little blue halo around that area. And it opens that original data form that we just filled out together. So that previous information is all here for you to look at. And in order to record an activity then on the same, same area or a treatment on this area, you can either tap this link button or scroll up to the end where you'll find that link icon again and the treatment area activities table. So I'm going to tap that 
and we want to add a new treatment activity to this area. So I'm going to hit add, which opens a data form for that treatment area activity. And same thing, we've got some fields that are required and some that are not. We're going to record information on the treatment that was done on this on this day. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick really random stuff here just for the sake of filling it out. Make sure that's today and treatment by Jenny S. And I'm going to give it a good look through. Did I fill out everything I I can and what I need to. There's a treatment comments down here. I'm going to make sure that I say test here and then I'm going to submit that. Oh, here's a good lesson for you. I hit the submit button and it appears it doesn't want to submit. It's a fail and it's telling me that there is an attribute that failed. That word attribute really is referring to a field here in the data form and it's given me a lot of hints. For one thing, I can hit view and if it was a really for, long form, you see it popped right up to the top for me. Hey, it's this one. And this word required is a messaging telling me, hey, you missed this one. It's a required field. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the directions then and put something in that required field. And let's try submit again. And there we go, submitted. So on the treatment area, closing this all up, we recorded a treatment area. We returned to that treatment area, selected it and recorded on that same area without having to redraw it, a treatment activity. And that's how that would repeat in, in process using that layer and that related table. Finally, we have the site plans layer. And again, I direct you back to that user manual, page three. In this map, you can edit attributes. This is listed as not a reference layer, but an operational layer for use. It certainly probably may be helpful as a reference layer, but this map is where you are able to edit the fields involved. And the site plans layers is provided as a property boundaries layer or parcels at the point in time that they were pulled from the county data set. New geometry or changes to geometry. What I mean by geometry is the shape. So if the parcel shape it needs to be changed, maybe it's bigger or smaller or different in some way, or new parcels need to be added, that's not something you're able to do in the site plans layer. That would be requested of the field GIS specialist through a supervisor or a state coordinator. I'm going to show you what it looks like. It sort of seems like you can, but you cannot edit the geometry, but you can edit those fields associated with the parcel. So I'll show you that. And additionally, selecting the parcel information opens property information and there is an associated site plans activities related table, which will allow you to record every activity on that parcel. This includes contact attempts made and site visits done for that property in preparation for treatment. So the, again, the site plan activities table is a new feature for 2022, allowing for recording those contact attempts. So again, I feel a little bit like I can tell it to you, but it seems better to see it in action in, in reality. So let's have a look at that on the iPad as well. And here we are back where we were before. I'm going to go ahead and open the layers menu. And in order to record data or see a layer, we're going to have to enable it. And we had the points, treatment points and treatment areas enabled, but not site plans. So we're going to turn that layer on just by toggling that little switch there. And you can see that all popped in there. So this is our site plans layer, all these parcels. And it, as I said, it might seem like you can add an area. And the reason why is we still have an add button here. And if we go ahead and hit add, and then we go down to site plans and choose one of these options, let's say somebody said limited access, it opens a new data form and it looks just like the areas where you add a point, add a point, add a point, close it up, add a point. But if I go ahead and try to submit this, let's see. I'm going to finish these fields that seem like they need it. 
Okay, so I've got all the required fields, but you might note there is one required field here that I actually can't put anything in. And if I go ahead and hit submit, you'll find it will fail. So it might seem like you can add a parcel, but you'll find it will fail. So you, you cannot edit the geometry in this layer. Okay, let's look at what we can do instead. I'm gonna cancel out of that, but I wanted to show you that it does seem like you can. So let's say we're over here, here in this treatment area and we're wondering about this parcel here. In order to see the site plans information on this parcel, you just tap it to select it. And right away, you see the data form for that and all of that relevant reference information on that parcel are right there for you. Locality, parcel ID, etc., all the way down. And you can scroll up and down and use it. Maybe that's all you need, right? But you also have two options here. You have that activities table icon, that link, and you have a pencil icon, which is really the universal editing icon. So I'm gonna hit that editing icon. You can also find it by scrolling to the end and you'll see edit there. There we go. And now this same data form is open for edits. So let's say it turns out, uh, I don't know, let's say um, you wanna add some access notes, maybe let's say the property, uh, the ownership is actually not private, but public. And wow, that's a big deal. We really need to know that. Um, so you change that. Probably more often than not, it'll be this access granted or, or a new date or something like that. But just randomly to show you that it can be changed. I was able to edit that field. And now what I need to do because of that edit is submit that edit. So I'll go ahead and tap submit. So in order to edit the field or the attributes in the site plans layer here, you simply select that parcel and hit edit or that, or that pencil icon. Make that edit and submit. Now let's say we are returning uh, we're going to use the site plans activities table in order to record that everyday activity, the contact attempts made, or site visits done. That's a very similar process. You're going to select the parcel on the map. Uh, you probably use the parcel ID to make sure you've got the right one, but you know, however you want to check to be sure you're in the right one and read through that. You get a view of the attributes. To access that related table is this little link icon or scroll to the end of that data table and find the site plan activities link. We're going to add an activity and there's our little form. We have required fields. I'm going to go ahead and fill that out. Let's say they re rescinded access now and we're going to put in the date as today and my name. And I'm going to put in test. Why not? Now I'm going to review this, this uh, all these fields. Yep, looks good and submit. So closing that up, let's say, and deselecting that, let's say we return to a parcel layer and we're kind of curious, what was the history of all these activities? You can open up that activities table and you can see the history of what's happened here, all of these visits. First in, uh, in February, full access was granted. Then here today, access was rescinded. You can tap on these to get the full data form and review them. And that gives you the access to all of that information. So that's site plans. Um, that's site plans. That's the site plans activities related table, making edits to the site plans and adding information on contacts made, whether that's uh, a site visit or otherwise. So that really brings us to caution areas. Like I said, I'm hoping we really kind of covered these, but they're important to review. We've got two different URLs when you sign in. When in doubt, sign out. There's an official MRP sign in, which is where we want official data being entered and a training version, which we want you to use, but be careful not to get those mixed up. Be sure you're in the right one, entering data in the right one. The site plans layer is editable, the attributes are editable, editable. <laughs> boy, I've said that word too much today. The attributes or fields are editable here in this map, but the geometry is not. That's done by request through the field GIS specialist. 
be sure you're using the disconnected data workflow. I'm going to pull in this lower one that also be sure if you are working disconnected, you are performing a daily data sync. You want to make sure you're in really reliable Wi-Fi connection when you do that, and we recommend twice a day. The submit button can fail if you don't complete all of the required fields, and it gives you messaging to kind of help you out, figure out what you're missing in order to submit. Um, be careful with your data collection. I can't tell you how many times I've just looked one more time and found some oddity that I've entered. I'm totally capable of entering data, but for some reason that one more look really saves me some mistakes every time. And then finally that markup layer, we, we brought your attention to it, just two little caveats. Be sure that you're not using it as an official data collection layer and just understand that it really is private to your device unless you share it out. So I would love to hear if you find cool ways of using that new feature, but just be careful with the fact that it's not official and really private to your device. Getting help is important. We could have talked through all kinds of things today and any number of odd things happen or you kind of forget once you get out in the field, new things happen. So really lean hard for survey protocol issues or even training requests that, that you feel are important. Um, lean hard on <laughs> lean hard on Matt Travis. He is your multi-state coordinator. Erica Wiley is your willing helper as well. iPad issues, or for that matter, device issues, iPhones and iPads, are supported at least in PPQ through CECIT. So if you have problems with the device itself or it's not configured, you don't see the application, open up a ticket and make them help you. Um, they're willing and able to support. Portal access, or maybe some oddities with the details of the application itself, um, obviously go to your supervisor and they'll know where to find help most specific to your area, but they also have resources with the local field GIS specialist that supports your area and this email address for requesting support if it's needed further. And finally, all things and user tools group training really use that mobile data collection tools web page. I hope that you bookmark it. There are things being updated there all the time and we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips. The nice thing about a public web page is that you can use it anywhere from any web browser and at any time. So this is your best bet for finding all kinds of training support. Don't forget to take the quiz. As I said, it really helps me out it personally. Um, it shows me whether my training is getting across, but it also can, it, if you answer that third question with your email address clearly, it'll give you that automated email that you can forward up and get credit whatever credit means for you for this training. And it just is a nice little review, especially while everything's fresh in your mind. So please take that quiz. Today we talked about in the property assessment training for the last 43 minutes or so, this new app, the ArcGIS Field Maps application, signing into it properly because we have two portal or two URLs to stick in there, making sure you're in a training map for playing around and the official map for official data. Using that disconnected workflow, if at all possible, we looked over the three layers. Remember, it was a treatment points layer, a treatment areas layer, and a site plans layer. And there were also two related tables. The treatment area activities records repeated activities on the same area. And then the site plans activity table records repeated contacts to that parcel or to that spot. So make sure that you have those clear. We talked all through those and also showed you how those work. And then we went into caution areas to be especially careful of. That is what I needed to share with you, but I wanna make sure that this came across to you. And so this is my information. Please feel free to reach out to me anytime. But we have ended a little early by design so that if you have any questions, it, however you feel comfortable, if you wanna raise your hand, if you wanna type in the chat box or just feel free to speak up, that's totally fine with me as well. But do you have any questions on the property assessment map that we covered today? Or is there anything I can show you again or more? Okay, I got a little private message in the chat asking for the link to the quiz, and it was it was shared early on. So I'm going to share it again. 
Oh, okay. I've got another private message. Sorry, Erica, just one second. I do have a question about, I missed the training before this one, which I'm assuming is the trapping and visual training. Am I able to view the recording? And the answer is yes. That recording will show up on the mobile data collection tools webpage. Towards the bottom, there is a whole section that's a video gallery. Uh, just quickly, I'll pull that over for you. Um, so on the main page, which is the link I just placed in there, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a video gallery. It's going to show up here under the pest program category, or you could search for it here in the keyword search. But give me about a week, Monica. Um, it takes me a little while to produce and then get all the um, approvals for that. And also we have a question. So can treatment polygons still overlap if they are only slightly different? And this sounds like a survey protocol question. And so I would point you, I think this is Rachel Broad, um, I would point you to Matt Travis and, er and or Erica Wiley. And actually, Erica, it looked like you wanted to say something. Is there anything you'd like to share? Yeah, the treatment polygons can overlap if they're they're different. Um, we had the question yesterday about um, like a dino polygon and a bifen if they were in the same area, so they can still overlap. Just make sure that I caution you to make sure that when you're doing the activities, that you're creating the activities for the actual chemical or activity that you're doing. So if you're doing a polygon for dyno and you're doing the related record for that dyno, make sure that you select the correct polygon for that area. Thanks, Erica. Yeah, that's a great question too. And uh, thanks, Erica, for being here. <laughs> I, I wasn't <laughs> sure if you were here until I saw you pop up to the top. Um, is, is there anything else, Erica, that I missed or anything that you know to be uh, a primary question that comes up that you, anything else that you'd like to share? Nothing has come up um, from Tuesday or from today. I just wanted to say thank you. I forgot to say thank you in the last one. So oh, oh, you're awesome. very welcome. <laughs> thank you for all of your support. I really appreciate it. So as everyone can see, Erica is perfectly willing to help and very knowledgeable. She's the she's a great resource to go to. OK, well, I like ending early. And uh, so and I don't like our meetings. It's just a personal preference. So it, unless anyone has anything else and you're totally welcome to interrupt me or, or type that in the chat, I'm going to hang out for another 10 minutes. But officially, I will say um, thank you very much for your participation, for being responsible, trying to learn everything you can about this and, and really collect this data well and be good data stewards. Um, I just wish you good luck and thank you so much.